Waiters and waitresses of Reddit, what is the most horrible experience you have had with a customer? Story 1. This happened a long time ago. I used to work at TGIF as a busboy, and there was this huge group of about 20 people. At the end of their meal, they received the bill. Everyone put in money for what they ordered. They sat there for a while doing the math and finally figured it out. They call their waitress over and say, We ain't order no gratuity. Show me gratuity on this table. They continued to try and argue and made the waitress cry. Manager had to be called in to explain what gratuity was. Story 2. Waitress here? Had a large bruise, size and width of a hand, on my upper forearm super swollen and purple. Had a guy grab my arm and ask, Does this hurt? Before squeezing hard. He spent the remainder of his visit making domestic abuse jokes and talking about how he was going to take me home and give me more. Drunk guy with his wife who made jokes about mounting me while the wife just laughed and then tried to rub my arm. Side stepped out the way of that though. LPT, don't touch your server. Story 3. My worst, most awkward experience came from my favorite regular. When I was waiting tables, I had this cowboy who used to come in every Sunday after church for brunch usually with his wife, but sometimes alone. We would talk about horses, rodeoing, life, and when he was alone, women lol. One Sunday, I didn't see him, and he didn't come in for two more weeks after that. On the fourth week, I see him again and took him from the hostess and sat him myself at an open table in my section. After I get his extra, extra sweet tea and coffee set for him, I asked where he had been and told him he better have a hell of a vacation to tell me about. He dropped his eyes and softly mumbled that his wife had passed away. My heart dropped and didn't know what to say. My manager who knew him let me and another waiter he liked get off early and sit with him for his meal. He didn't talk much, but I could tell he appreciated just having someone sit with him. Seeing the pain that he felt really put a lot into perspective for me and made me appreciate my own relationship so much more. I lost contact with him after I moved away to start my career, but I really wish I could find him and talk to him again and let him know what an impact he had on my life. Story 4. So I never waited tables, but I was a busboy the entire time I was in high school. We had this family that would come in, dude and his wife, their two small kids. They seemed like the most ordinary family, but they were like Vishnu, the destroyers of tables. They always left a flipping disaster. Fries everywhere, cow all over the floor. I sat and watched as one of the kids put the salt and pepper shakers into a glass of milk, and then watched the dad be like, Hey, can Junior have a new milk? He had a little accident. They were both submerged in milk. Fries everywhere, crumbs everywhere. One percent of the food had been consumed. They screamed the entire time to zero reaction from the parents. It was chaos for the entire hour they were there, every time. I had to clean this up probably a dozen times before the hostess asked them not to come back. Yeah, they threw a flipping fit. Didn't come back, though. Nightmare. Story 5. A lady and her husband came in and before sitting down, told us that she was deathly allergic to white wine, saying, Verbatim, if you feed me white wine, I will pass away. So I run around double and triple, checking recipes and ingredients, and making sure the kitchen is ready so when she orders, I know her food will be safe. Her husband orders the special, and I make sure to tell her not to eat any of his meal as it is dressed with a beurre blanc made with white wine, and I'd like her to survive her dining experience. Well, I bring out their food, and the first thing she does is scoop a big old forkful of hubby's special, and I cry out in dismay as she shoves in her dumb flipping mouth and says while chewing, Oh, one bite won't hurt. She also single-handedly every server on the floor by forcing them into inane, inappropriate conversations while they were trying to take care of their busy sections, and cornered another guest in the tiny corridor leading to the bathrooms to tell him, aggressively, he was being too loud. Conclusion, I'm deathly allergic to X equal sign equal sign. I don't really like X, an old bad person, and busy servers don't give a cow about your week. Story 6. I wait tables in a country club. Had a couple come in once, and as they were sitting down, before I had even introduced myself, the woman was already complaining. Since they had to wait five minutes while we resat their table, she started off by telling me every time she gets the filet mignon it's awful, and cooked wrong. I suggested she tried something else. Nope. Goes for the same thing again. I gave the kitchen heads up and make sure it was perfect and save us all a headache. Steak comes up, seems fine. I drop her plate in front of her, and I can already see that nonsense smirk people get when errant amused. She grabs her butter knife and legit slaps the top of the steak with the flat of it three times and goes, This is disgusting! Hasn't even into it or tasted it. Has me take it back and bring her a new one. So of course we do it. She gets her new one, eats half of it and takes the rest home, wants to talk to a manager. Complainers up a storm, gets her whole meal free in desert. Leave me a garbo tip even if you don't include the free steak in desert. Even left me a comment card just saying, Steak sucked and one star for service. Story 7 worst is a big group coming in on a Sunday. Ordered endless chip appetizer. Waters all around asked for extra lemons. 
you can see where this is going. Stayed for a few hours, total bill, like $6. Got tipped 50 cents for having to wait around on them for literally my entire shift. Then the whole I am sensitive to gluten spiel that people have. Then they order a beer. I point that beer has gluten in it and they say, oh, well, that doesn't bother me. It is just gluten and food that bothers me. Whatever, edit. I probably should edit my post. But like 90% of the gluten-free customers are fine. Just some of those 10% can be extra demanding and sometimes end up eating bread and other things that have gluten in it. It is just the entrees that give them issues. We have an entire gluten-free section on our menu, but some gluten customers want to order off the regular menu and want us to make changes and stuff to accommodate them. It ends up taking about 4x as long as it should and prevents me from being able to serve my other tables. Those are the gluten-free customers I'm having issues with. Story 8. I did a stint at Starbucks. They put into the target I was working at, had just graduated from my degree program, and they offered to let me manage it. It was good money. Of special note, the just graduated bit. Graduated from college, as had the person I was working with. We made this woman's iced tea wrong. I don't remember why it was a stupid mistake, but those happen. It would have taken all of 30 seconds to remake it. She threw it back across the counter, literally threw it, turned to her daughter and said in the most preppy, never worked a day in her life soccer mom, trophy wife voice. See, this is why we finish high school. Being the manager, I refused her any further service. She thought she had me by the short hairs when she went to get the Target store manager. But when a ton of other customers backed up my story, she was removed from Target. Story 9. Worked as a barback, I accidentally dropped a fork on a very drunk dude's foot, who got angry and shook his head and grumbled about it. Shocking, I know. Bits of food fell on the ground as well, so I grabbed a towel to clean it up. I look the man in the eye to let him know I'm on the floor cleaning next to him. He then proceeds to stand up and step on my hand as he walks to the bathroom. It hurt like a bad person, and I yelled out in pain. He didn't acknowledge it at all, but chuckled as he walked away. Sadly, there wasn't much I could do. I just got angry and walked to the back to calm down. Edit. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I have many more horror stories from the year I worked there. Story 10. 12 years in the industry. Worked front and back of the house throughout. Definitely more good times than bad. Always tried to defuse situations before they escalated out of control, but a few moments stand out. The best moment was some dad giving me nonsense about misquoting the price of the lunch special, one dollar less, in front of his family. Pulled a buck out of my pocket and dropped it on the table and walked off. Almost got stabbed by another prep cook when he thought the food wasn't coming out fast enough. Walked off that job. Executive chef offers me another 25 cents hour to come back. No thanks. Life is worth more than that. Story 11. Not a waitress, but worked in a healthy QSR. And not most horrible experience, but memorable. There was some sort of convention near my store location. I live in Ottawa, a short hop, skip, and a jumble from Quebec. The city is pretty bilingual, but not everyone is. Like me. Anyway, this woman is trying to order, but is speaking French. I can get the gist of things if I hear certain words, but she was speaking rather fast. After a couple minutes of back and forth, trying to answer her questions, I turn to a co-worker who is bilingual and ask him to help as her and I seem to have a language barrier. As I finish my request to said co-worker, she says in totally perfect English with probably as much disdain as she could muster. And I quote, This is Canada. We speak French and English. My mouth dropped, not only because of the comment, but because she understood me the whole time and didn't try to help. I couldn't wrap my mind around why someone would do that. Come on. Not everyone is taught French in school. I grew up in the West Coast prairies where French is not a mandatory subject. All I could do was stare at her for a few seconds and walk away. Story 12. I was working behind a dessert bar. We had a homeless drunk lady that would come in to get drinks, but you have to have food, so she would get clam chowder. She would ask for it to be reheated every 10 minutes, but never touched it. The server started to ignore her requests to reheat the dish, so the lady took her bread and slammed it into the chowder, spraying it all over the customers in my area. Management kicked her out. A few minutes later, a customer came in and said, Hey, some lady just took a cow in the doorway. Story 13. I used to work at Subway. There was one legendary customer that we only refer to as Crazy Bacon Lady. She was an older woman. She came in and asked how much a 6 inches BLT was. We told her it was 3.50 plus tax. She then proceeded to yell at us, saying it was $2 when she came in yesterday. Hint, she didn't come in yesterday. In fact, this was the first time she had even been in our store. Plus the fact that the BLT was never at any point $2 in the three years I had worked there. She barks out her order the whole way up the line saying such gems as, I am a good Christian woman. I don't deserve to be treated this way. For 3.50, that bacon better be fresh. The service here is terrible. I'm never coming back. You hear me. And the best one of them all, 
when she gets to my coworker who is manning the cash register and he tells her the total of 3.68, tax and all. She says, you people are workers of the devil. She plops down exact change, snatches up her bag and storms out the door. Whenever I see my old coworkers, we still have a good laugh about it. Story 14. We had a horrible experience with every other customer because of one customer. The dude was a regular, came in at least four times a week, and every time would camp in his booth for a solid three hours. You know the type. One Friday night during dinner rush, this guy comes in with a large duffel bag. Not too uncommon, he always brought weird stuff to work on. This time, it was a partially assembled AR-15 kit, which he pulled out, set on the table, and proceeded to continue assembling the kit. Cue mass complaints, alarm from other customers, while we huddle in the back, deciding how to best kick him out without causing even more of a scene. Story 15. Posted this before on slash r slash tales from your server. Situation. Busy dinner shift. Six top tables sits at my large booth. Two white middle-aged couples and an older white couple. At the beginning of service, I noticed they were very inquisitive, to say the least. This does not bother me as I like answering any and all questions regarding the menu. I feel as if this is a main part of my overall job as your server. Anyways, they all ordered their meals, received them in a timely fashion, and had no initial complaints. I stayed on top of their refills and condiment requests, seeing as they were a bit needier than your average table. Again, no qualms from me here as this is the basic function of the job, and I do this every time for every table. Now for the fun part, time to pay the bill. Lady in the middle tells me it will be three separate checks and hands me one of our buy one entree, get one entree, 50% off coupons. She said that it will apply to all three checks. Confused, I informed her that she must have two more coupons if she wished to receive the discount on the other two checks. She then says that the coupon says one per check at the bottom and that I am mistaking and she would like to speak to a manager. I said okay and went to inform our FOH manager of the situation. Manager arrives at the table and proceeds to tell her the exact same thing I said. She does not look happy. The old man at the table then blurts out that he is a veteran and did not receive his military discount. Well, our restaurant doesn't offer these kinds of discount, but eager to get them out, my manager gives him a 10% discount on his bill. Now he's mad that the discount was not applied to the entire table and says, I go to Waffle House and get 15% off my whole bill. Side note, we are a lot fancier than a Waffle House. At this point, they are standing up in the middle of the dining room, being loud and obnoxious at both me and my manager, and causing a scene in front of other patrons and employees. Then this lady, oh, this stupid, ignorant, flipping lady comes up right to my face, puffs her chest out, and then says, What are you, some kind of idiot? All while pointing her finger an inch from my face. There's no discount on my bill at all now! she yells, which there was a discount on the bill, but at this point, they were more concerned with making a scene even if they are obviously mistaken. To avoid the stream of obscenities that was itching to escape from my mouth, I instantly turned around and walked away to de-escalate the already deteriorated situation. I get to the back and am visually upset. My general manager was standing on expo and saw I was upset and got loud with me telling me to calm down. Bad flipping timing. I tossed my drink tray and walked out the back door because I swear to God I was being tested. After my other manager explained the situation to the GM as well as the actions of the hellish table, nothing ever came of the confrontation. After everything was said and done, the FOH manager hands me their credit slip after they paid the bill. Stiffed on $120. Sorry for the long post, but I swear some people truly and honestly flipping suck. Story 16. Had a group of girls speak to my manager and call me a stupid hoe over 13 cents. Basically, they ordered a side of fries and one maybe got a lemonade. Anyway, give them their bill and they gave me just enough to cover it since we round to the nearest dollar instead of dealing with coins. Girls flip out over 13 cents so I go in my bag to scrounge it up. They speak to my manager who refunded them everything, stupid, and they proceed to call me names as they leave their table. I was having a bad day so it made me upset at the time. Now I find the whole thing laughable. Story 17. Guy tries to get my attention. So instead of saying, excuse me, miss, he intentionally grabbed my arse and then apologized with, oh, sorry. I was going for your hip. I know I've got a booty, okay? It's not hard to miss. He got kicked out after that, as it wasn't the first time he's done it to other servers in our restaurant. Edit. Mind you, this also happened at a Cracker Barrel old country store in Kentucky. After he got kicked out of our restaurant, we found out a few months later he's also banned from another local establishment in town for, you guessed it, servers. Story 18. I'm going to mix things up and tell you all about a time that I was the idiot when I was a server. These three women came into the restaurant with their four little kids and I led them to their table, welcomed them, yada yada. By the time I was asking what they wanted to drink, the kids were already bored and had started climbing on the tables and chairs. 
I honestly thought it was cute, so I said without thinking, Ah, oh, you have a little family of monkeys. Immediately, I realized my mistake. My eyes widened in horror as theirs widened in surprise. I hoped they would ignore it, but one of the women turned to the two and loudly asked, Did this bad person really just? And I ran away. I served them their food and spent an entire hour avoiding eye contact as I didn't know what I could say that wouldn't make things worse. When they left and I went to collect the bill, one of the women actually left me a really good tip and a note that just said, It's okay! with a smiley face. I hope her life is full of sunshine and happiness and goodness. Eat it. Holy cow, I feel so heard. To the person who gave me gold, your mother is so proud of you and you look super pretty today. Also, I love you. Story 19. A family of six dined and dashed on Thanksgiving. It was already a rough thing to be working a family holiday, knowing my tribe was at home enjoying themselves. But to have to miss out on what should have been a good tip, it was just salt in the wound. At the end of the night, I just cried. All of the servers rallied around me and tried to offer me a portion of their tips to make up for a loss. I couldn't accept it, so they got me drunk and drove me home instead. They are awesome people. Edit. Thanks for the gold. It's my first. Story 20. I used to work at a bar restaurant that was inside a hockey arena. It was a cool place, and the people who worked there were fantastic. However, the arena was home to a, now defunct, OHL hockey team. On the surface, it was pretty cool because one of the banquet rooms overlooked the ice. So when it was slow during games, Staff could check out some of the action and see a few guys who made it to the NHL. But the players were flipping awful when they would come in after the games. Most of them were 18, 20 at the time. They never had any money and they acted like they owned the place. One night, after a game, a player, best kid on the team, blue chip, top five NHL prospect, comes in, orders a pizza, eats, gets the bill, waits until I'm out of sight, leaves the book on the table, and leaves. When I approach the table, I assume he's left cash. Nope. Little Thorn left me five promotional hockey cards that the team gave out that night, and one of them was the flipping mascot. I go tell the manager, and he says that I'm going to have to cover the $12 bucks for the pizza. I, a 24-year-old waiter, am irate at having to pay for a meal for a kid that is getting ready to sign a huge NHL contract, throw a huge hissy fit, and eventually he agrees to void it. The guy is still playing in the NHL and is having a pretty solid career. I should have just paid for the pizza and had him sign his dumb card. Story 21. I accidentally spilt a small glass of water on a lady who was dining alone. The place was packed, and a customer had banged into me making this happen. I apologized profusely, but she was absolutely vile. She was shouting at me so that the whole restaurant could hear. When she'd finished, I walked out into the kitchen and explained what I'd done to the manager and my co-worker. They started laughing, and I started crying and told them how vile she'd been, and that I'd usually laugh too, but couldn't this time. I told my manager how vile she'd been, and with each word I could see him getting angrier and angrier until he said, Where is she? We left the kitchen and I pointed her out. He marched over to her. I don't know what he said, but it involved escorting her out whilst the customers who'd overheard her applauded. To my old manager, Matt, you were a legend of a boss. To the lady, that's why you dine alone. You are a horrible person. Story 22. Not me, but a fellow co-worker. He was waiting on an elderly gentleman and his daughter for her birthday dinner. Everything was fine up until said server dropped the check off. The daughter insisted on paying, so the server gave the checkbook to her. Wrong move. The father yelled, WTF you think you're doing, kid? You made the biggest mistake of your flipping life. You'll flipping regret that. Now, since they were a cool table up until that point, the server thought he was joking and let out a little chuckle. Big mistake. The guy went off even more and finally said, You're lucky I'm not younger. I would kick your flipping peach. The daughter was so embarrassed, she tipped the guy 50 bucks on a dollar one hundred tab. I wouldn't believe this story if I didn't hear it myself. Story 23, was a waiter for five years and the oddest was a guy with dried blood on his shirt and hands. Ordered a coffee but only wanted it halfway filled. Only words he spoke to me. Stayed for less than five minutes, paid with change, and was out the door before I even processed what was happening. I still think about him from time to time and wonder if I was a part of an alibi or someone who'd just seen some cow and was in shock. Story 24, best, one was a dude that made me go back and forth to the kitchen because his meal wasn't the way he wanted it overcooked, then not cooked enough, then, oh, I'm celiac, please make sure there isn't gluten in it. He still ate a not gluten-free cake, etc. He also tried to steal the bottle of wine from the neighbor table, saying, the waiter told me that this bottle was for us, made poor comment about one of the waitress, spoke way too loud about uninteresting fact involving a rude vocabulary. In short, he was putting water into everyone boiling oil. Don't do that. At the end of the nightmare, he asked for compensation because of the way we treated him and started to throw and fit at my mother. That was my parents' restaurant. 
because she said no. He kept arguing and yelled, customer is king. In English, it's the customer is always right if I ain't mistaken. What he didn't know is that this sentence is a direct way to summon my father, the cook, from his kitchen. So my father just came out with a big ass knife and told, here in France, we got history with kings and I'm going to respect my ancestors who wants to get beheaded. Piece of trash, shut the hell up, paid his cow and went away. All that BS for a 15 euros meal, starter plus main course plus apple pie plus coffee. Story 25. Not a waitress, but previously a lady bartender at a theater. On an incredibly busy night where we are well understaffed, an old guy ordered a Jack Daniels, then proceeded to blank my next three questions of, would you like ice with that? Whilst chatting with his mates, other customers are desperately clamoring for my attention. After some thought, I put the ice in, as it's the more popular option. He then turns back, looks at his drink, cold and disgusted, says, What the hell is this? I don't want ice, flustered. I fix his drink, apologizing profusely. He still continues to look at me like dirt, pays scoffs and walks off. It sounds like a little thing I know, but I was only 18 and was so shook up by it. Story 26. A group of 10 came in for a birthday tone, have drinks and sing karaoke. I start going around the table asking what each person would like and I get to princess. She asks me for a drink menu. I tell her I have a beer list, but not a cocktail menu. It's a dive bar. She asks about pineapple drinks. I tell her we could do rum and pineapple, a pineapple upside down drink, etc. So she's asking her friend, no, that's not it. What did I have that one time that I loved? So two more tables sit while I'm trying to take her order. So I'm just trying to speed it along. I tell her we make pineapple margaritas unblended. She just kept asking, well, what other things with pineapple? So I tell her, you can pretty much make your own drink. What kind of liquor do you want? She took that as me saying to go back and make her own drink. So I backtrack and say, what I mean is we can start with a liquor and add pineapple and whatever other fruit or liquids you want. She finally just gets a pineapple upside down drink. So the night goes by. Everyone in her group is super chill. We're having a great time. And she's just got daggers on me the entire time. They finally cash out. I give her her bill, which is $5 one cent because of weird tax. It's cash only. I ask if anyone needs change. Everyone says they're good and leaves. I go look at her ticket and she left me a $5 bill. Nothing else. Normally, I wouldn't even print checks and just say $5. I don't know why after 12 years of serving and bartending, this sticks out to me. Anyway, F you princess and your dumb pineapple drinks. No wonder you were the only single one at the table. You owe me a penny. Story 27. Not a waiter, but went out with the ex and her family for her birthday dinner to an Ethiopian restaurant. Her mom is the queen of passive-aggressive and grilled the waitress for about half an hour. Nothing outright mean, but like I said, mistress of passive-aggressive. At one point, the waitress starts screaming, throws her notepad at us, and quits on the spot. She ended up coming back, but wouldn't talk to the ex's mom. We all left her an extra $20 tip, each. Story 28. I was new to the job and still finding my feet when I had a guy who was insistent that I wasn't capable of the job due to my dwarfism and kept complaining about inclusive bollocks. What I found frustrating about the whole situation is that I'm not a good waiter, but due to reasons completely unrelated to my dwarfism, poor memory, anxiety, coordination, etc., and he was doubting my competence before I had shown any of these issues. It was purely based on how I looked, but I never felt like I was able to prove him wrong either. That experience really got to me for a long time. Story 29. Being in the industry for over 15 years, you see a lot. I've been threatened by a woman who is going to get her knife and FK me up. I have had people grab my package, men and women. I've been at a location where some kids out our window with a pellet gun and my staff and customers thought we were under attack from terrorists. My favorite of all time is in a steakhouse where a guy was leaving and as he left, scooped at least 50 mints in his arms. My host at the time was a smart peach 20-year-old who had a good sense of humor. As the customer is leaving, he says, enjoy the mints. This infuriated the guy and he starts yelling and cussing. I'm managing and start to hear this from the front of the restaurant that night. And as I'm walking up there, I see a guy, dressed business casual, holding a steel load of mints and arms two feet away, yelling at this kid. And my host just has a huge smile saying, no, I'm not apologizing. I calmly ask if I can help the gentleman out while being completely lost as to what the hell is going on. And he yells he wants me to make the host apologize. I ask him to please calm down and let me talk to the host to see what happened. Host tells me, I told him enjoy the mints with the biggest smile he could manage. I then turn to this guy, his face red. Now shaking, he's so mad, mints falling out of his arms, and I just couldn't take it. I am trying so hard not to laugh in his face, and all I could manage was, Sir, please enjoy your mints. Needless to say, he leaves in a hissy fit, calls corporate, and then I get explain it to my boss.
Write-ups, which are complete garbage, are handed out, and we had to give this guy and his wife a free meal. Story 30. The worst issue I ever had was technically with a chef, not a customer, but I'll tell the customer story. It happened at a waffle house I worked at for just a few weeks when I was about 20 21sts. I had moved to a big city to pursue my pro wrestling dreams. Spoiler alert, I'm a secretary now, lol. And needed something to pay the bills and waitressing seemed easy enough. It wasn't too bad, until one evening when I was working a shift that was something like 6 p.m. To 2 a.m. around midnight or 1, the drunks come in. Usually fairly inoffensive if hard to explain how to order a hash brown. Pro tip, drunks almost always want ham. This one dude, though. He came in not just drunk, but possibly high off his balls on something. He was singing what I think was gangster rap by way of sea shanty. His shirt was unbuttoned except for one button over his chest. That was in a hole three spots too high for it. And he had one shoe. There were a few reasons our chef pretty immediately declared that he needed to get out. Said customer decided to explain his disagreement with the chef's decision by somehow climbing his way onto the bar, standing right in front of me at the dishwashing sink and immediately dropping his pants to show he was missing underwear as well. I admit, I panicked a little, grabbed the nearest available thing, and proceeded to the man in the banana with the hot water hose we used on the dishes. Anyone who's worked in a kitchen can probably attest to just how hot the water coming out of those hoses is. The man doubled over, screaming and grabbing at his crotch, toppled over backwards off the bar, hitting his head on one of the chairs on the way, and literally rolled across the floor towards the door, maintaining his fetal position the entire way. Conclusion of afterwards, we called the police. They came and got him, took statements, laughed for perhaps an unkind length of time, and took him to the hospital. And some months later, I found out he had plea bargained to a couple hundred hours community service for public intoxication and disturbing the peace, or something like that. Story 31. Didn't happen to me, but my sister is a waitress. One night, she was serving a nice, older couple for dinner. She took their food order, brought out their soups and salads that included a French onion soup with a glob of provolone cheese on top. She handed off the food and walked away to check on her other table that was located in a different dining room. A few minutes later, she hears a commotion coming from the, the dining room the older couple was eating in. The woman started screaming that her husband was choking, so my sister rushed to help. By the time my sister got to the table, he was slumped over in his chair and unresponsive. Since she knew CPR from her lifeguard class, she brought him to the ground, and when she checked his airway for food, she found a lump of provolone cheese in the back of his throat that she couldn't dislodge herself. The EMTs showed up as she was trying to clear his airway and took over the CPR attempt from there. But unfortunately, they had to give up a few minutes later, as it was obvious he was already gone. The wife was beside herself and my sister was visibly shaken from seeing a guy choke to death in front of her. When the EMTs were loading him into the ambulance, they tried to reassure my sister she did the best she could and that he was probably already dead by the time he was slumped in his chair. Story 32. Worked at a very popular chain wing place, you all know it. 24 top to myself, with other tables in my section, all separate checks, all mostly cash, which needed change, and all trying to pay at the same time. During this frantic moment of me hustling to make change and swipe cards, I have at least four of these mother trying to sneak out the front door. I saw them, slam down everything in my hands and chase them all the way to their cars. I confronted one of the girls as she rolled her window up while yelling, Fudge you bad person! and peeling out of the parking lot. Forget the rest of them, I went back in, Mind you, no support from fellow staff here. I get back into the rest of the people impatiently waiting for me, and some of them trying to tell me they already paid me when I know they didn't. I was so GD angry that night I vowed to never put myself through that for so little again. So I quit. I love my job now. Story 33. I worked at Friendly's when I was 16. First serving job. One day, I'm sat at 10 top, two of which were counselors. The rest were special needs adults. As soon as I introduce myself to the table, one of the counselors cuts me off and says, they all want Cokes. Bring them an extra cup with ice so we can pour in a little at a time. No problem. Come out with eight Cokes and eight glasses of ice. One of the clients gets excited and grabs my arm, causing me to spill the drinks on the floor. All of the clients at the table start laughing and the counselor tells me I need to be more careful. After I clean everything up, I get the food order. Lots of dietary restrictions. As I start running the food out, the same client goes for my arm again. I am able to avoid his grasp, but the counselor hisses, Watch yourself like I had done something wrong. The table eats and gets ready to leave. The counselor leaves me a 72-cent tip on an $80 bill. On the way out the door, she grabs my arm and says, Someone pissed the seat. Wear gloves when you clean it up. I worked at several restaurants since then over the last 10 years, but this is still my worst experience. Story 34. I used to have this couple come into the coffee shop I worked at in the early 90s, before all restaurants in my state became tobacco-free. 
He was a man in his 50s, and his wife was in her 70s and in a wheelchair. They were both always dirty and smelly and vulgar, and they only ever sat at a table and drank coffee and smoked cane after cane. The man was disgustingly filthy. He never bathed or changed his clothes or brushed his teeth, and his stink would make me want to vomit when he came to the register to pay his dollar two coffee bill. The woman only ever wore a house coat and slippers, and you could see the catheter coming from between her legs with a clear bag of urine hanging off the side of her wheelchair. The husband would often bring her in the cafe, set her up at the table with her coffee and cigarettes, and then leave her there for two or more hours. She would sit and cry, but then yell at anyone who tried to help her, so we left her alone and kept her coffee full, hoping that catheter bag held out. They almost never ate, but because they didn't really cause any trouble, and the restaurant wasn't busy most of the times that they came in, the manager didn't feel compelled to ever do anything about them. They stopped coming in the day after our state enacted no smoking laws in all restaurants, and we never saw them again. But later on, a terrible story came to light. The man was leaving his wife there for hours while he was off a 14-year-old girl that lived in the trailer park that he managed. When she got pregnant, he stole the park receipts, burned down the office, ran off with the girl, and they went on a crime spree that culminated with them murdering two people in a horrific manner. They were both captured, and he is on death row, and she is spending her life in prison. Story 35. This one is more of a sad story, but one of the common and horrible parts of working in a restaurant. I worked at a very popular seafood place in a resort town. A family comes in one night, and they are clearly on vacation. It's a dad, mom, and two young boys, probably both around five, seven years old. I get a weird vibe from these people, like a white trash vibe, so immediately, I was thinking, oh, cow, well, I'm not getting tipped on this table. I go to the table and greet them and offer them one of our featured drinks that night. The mom immediately says yes to the special drink, and the dad interrupts her and quietly whispers something. I didn't think anything of it. I return a couple of minutes later with the drink order and suddenly realize that this lady is absolutely trashed. I quickly went back and got her a dummy drink. As the dinner goes on, I notice that the lady has a flask as well, and start noticing that her husband is subtly begging her to stop drinking. The kids start to notice that something is up, and are clearly very upset, not saying a word, just sitting in silence looking down. The kids are drawing pictures on their placemats showing their mom, and she's just barely remaining consciousness. As the woman keeps getting worse, the husband asks for all of their food to go. I wrapped everything up, they paid their check, and as they were walking out, the woman ended up getting lost and going into the kitchen and lit up a cane. The husband had been walking ahead of her with the kids, so he thought she was still following him to the exit. I had to go and get him and tell him in front of his kids that his wife was smoking a cane in the kitchen and that he had to go and get her out. The kids immediately started crying, and the one young boy said, Why does she do this, Daddy? I wanted to pass away. I felt so bad for this man and his kids. He was able to get his wife to leave the kitchen, and she finally exited the restaurant. He apologized profusely to me, and I honestly just wanted to hug the guy. The kids were obviously exposed to this before, and it really broke my heart. There was nothing anyone could do to stop it. Anyway, I looked back at the credit card slip that the guy left, and it was a giant tip. Just another lesson to never prejudge people because you never know what they're going through. Story 36. I had a couple order two bowls of mussels, take each mussel out of its shell and then them up before eating them. When they saw the stomach of the mussel, among other gross-looking inside bits, they started yelling that I, the cooks, as well as the restaurant, were trying to poison people. They would not believe that mussels really do look as awful and horrifying as they honestly do, and under no circumstances should be up or analyzed too closely. I ushered them out as quickly as I could. No bill. Please stop accusing me of attempted murder. It's making everyone here uncomfortable. Story 37. When I was working at Rita's, a water ice stand, I had a lady come to the window with her two children. First off, she had on booty shorts with her peach checks hanging out and a corset-type top that was ten sizes too small. It just barely covered her balls. And did I mention she had her two young children with her? Well, anyways, it's busy and the line is long and she comes up. I take the order for her daughter and then her son says he has to pee. She then takes her son to the side of our building. We have windows on the side so we get a full view of the front and has him pee there when there was a huge tree about a few feet away and we had a bathroom that we allow kids use. Well, anyway, she's taking long and with the line wrapping around the building, I take the next customer while she lets her son pour out the water up our building. She then comes back and steps in front of the lady and says she's ready. I asked her to give me a minute since I was almost finished with the customer that she just stepped in front of. She then goes on to yell really loud how unprofessional I was and how I had terrible customer service. I then explained to her that while she had her son pee on the side of the building, I decided to try and get the next person out of the way. She then goes to deny her son peeing on the side of the building and says she would like to speak to my manager. 
My manager doesn't believe in the customers, always write nonsense, and hated people like this. So I gave her his number and wrote down my name for her to tell him, which pissed her off even more. She did wait to get her stuff though, screaming the whole time I'm making it, then huffs off. The people behind her each apologized for the way she acted, and all told me I was doing a great job and gave me tips. There's also the that we had to call the cops on because he would wait until we closed and try and get us to come to his house to clean. Yep, I don't work there anymore. Story 38. I work at a winery where we get the occasional limo full of drunk people. We do not allow them in because we are not a bar and do not serve drunk people. Occasionally, the manager is away from the door. That's me. And that's when they will attempt to sneak in. I had to approach one of them and tell them politely that their party had too much to drink and had to leave. And she said, I'm not going anywhere. I assured her that my staff would not serve her, so it was pointless to insist on staying. I said if she didn't leave within five minutes, she would be escorted by a police officer. And she said, nonsense. You're not going to do cow. So I called the local cop we have on call right in front of her and said, he is on his way. I suggest you leave if you want to save yourself the embarrassment. She proceeded to follow me into the back office. I was going out the side door to get the limo plate hash, and she pushes me into a filing cabinet and says, we aren't leaving, bad person. Then her group came back, grabbed her, and they sped off in their limo. The cop arrived a minute later, and I gave him the plate number to go give them a little scare. All this for a glass of wine. Happens at least three, five times a year. Story 39. I had a large party that took my entire section on the patio. It seemed like a family celebration, and after all the joiners arrived, they needed tables in another waitress's section as well. They ordered lots of food and drinks. They were loud. And they ended up staying for seven hours, which meant they had a big bill, over $1.800. The took over the patio, and they were there for my whole shift. This is not necessarily bad because they were celebrating, and for me, they were fairly happy customers. However, as you may have guessed, they didn't tip me anything at all when they finally cleared out. And I cried the whole time I cleaned up their huge mess because I had to tip out a percentage of their bill to the kitchen and bar, which meant I had worked my whole shift and was now going home with less than server's hourly wage which is less than minimum wage. Many of my coworkers were kind and supportive and told me similar stories that had happened to them. But really, it was less comforting and more painful to think about how frequently this happens. Abolish the tipping system. Story 40. When I was in high school, I worked at a Johnny Rockets. It was maybe my second day waitressing and a guy with his family ordered a plain burger. Put the order in, but put it in slightly incorrectly, so it came out with none of the toppings, but it did have Thousand Island dressing. Honest new kid mistake. The guy was totally pissed, made such an angry face that I can still recall it 13 years later, and then, out of nowhere, smeared the burger all over my chest and walked out. Story 41. First day our bar opened. We were slammed. We were using a POS system which was brand new. Only two other places uses it, and it was cow. The kitchen staff didn't know how to handle the rush. I was the assistant manager, so I was handing all the servers problems while running a 24-seat bar getting drinks for the server's tables. One giant meathead marine, man, I know I messed up up, but God, oh no. He ordered wings. I had to keep asking him to repeat the order because the POS was terrible. And employees kept asking me questions, ruining my train of thought. He wanted a different channel put on the TV in front of him. There were 42 TVs in the store, no master controller, so I would have to dig to find the correct remote while flipping slammed. He wanted extra sauce. I forgot trying to get a stupid flipping channel change while running the bar. He gets up and yells so loud that the restaurant goes silent. This is the worst flipping experience I've ever had a restaurant. You guys are flipping awful. Even though I reiterated multiple times that this is our first day open and there will be bumpy and that we ask you be patient. I quit that night. Now I work at a brewery with 8,000x less stress and much better hours. Story 42. Man comes in alone, looked to be in his late 50s or early 60s, and snaps at me to get my attention. Before I can speak, he says, Cola. With a lemon wedge. We were a tiny little cafe without the funding for a machine or the attention for a sponsorship, so we didn't serve soda. I told him so, and he said, I don't think you heard me. I want a cola with a lemon wedge. I was pretty confused because I made it pretty clear we didn't have cola. Turns out he actually wanted me to walk next door, buy him a cola, and then bring it in and serve it to him. I told him as politely as I could that this was absolutely not happening, and he picked up the china teacups we put at each place setting and threw it on the ground, shattering it and cutting open my ankle just a bit. I didn't notice until way later. The whole cafe went very quiet, and I just kind of stood there looking at the mess of broken china. These were beautiful, rare cups that were all but impossible to replace, and I just didn't know what to do being an 18-year-old facing up against an aggressive older man. Fortunately, just literally a few seconds after the china hit the floor, a man got up from his table across the cafe and walked over. 
He then reached in his back pocket and showed the man his police badge because he was an off-duty cop. China throwing guy did not get his cola with a lemon wedge or any food, but he did get arrested and a ticket for making threats and breaking public property. The fun part? I just wanted a goddamn cola! If this little girl knew anything about service, I wouldn't have had to set her straight. I learned later he was the town loony who had actually done something like this on several other locations in town. I still have the scar from the piece of China that my ankle. Conclusion. Guy wanted a drink we didn't serve, told me to buy it from next door, and then broke a teacup over my feet when I said no. Arrested and fined. Story 43. I've posted this before, but I had been working at this Thai place in my town for about eight months. And for the last four months, I'd seen the same teenaged couple come in every Sunday and leave 0% regardless of service. One day, my boss decided enough was enough. Tui noi, she all but yelled to me. That's my Thai nickname. It's an endearing name generally given to chubby children that loosely translates to little something. I don't care whose turn it is. You take them next week and you make sure you earn that 0%. I do a bit of a double take. She can't possibly mean what I think she means. You mean? She nods and gives me this smile that is equal parts devious and smug. A week later, they come in five minutes into my shift. She seats them in my section, smiles at me, and tells me to do my worst. Here is a fairly detailed account of the wonderful 45 minutes that followed. I wait a good five minutes before going to greet them and bring waters. They're ready to order. I don't have a pen. I'll be right back. I promise. I go out back, power breathe a cane. It takes me about 90 seconds before I return. They're my only table and I'm not handling food yet, so I don't wash my hands. I reek of breathe. I take her order. Pad Thai, no bean sprouts like always. As he opens his mouth to tell me he'll have the same, I give him the just a minute finger and pull out my phone. I text my fiance and ask if he wants to get dinner from my place or his tonight. I take his order. I somehow misunderstand and write down extra bean sprouts. Their food comes up while I'm telling my boss and the other waitress a story about my cat. I finish telling the story before I get their food. I bring it out and walk away as they're starting to complain about the sprouts. About five minutes after they get the food, I get a second table. One is a customer from a former job of mine, and we spend a few minutes catching up when I go to greet them. The zero percents try to signal me as I leave the table, but I stare straight ahead. I come back from my new table's order and see that their glasses are missing roughly four sips of water. This simply won't do! I hang their ticket and come back to fill their glasses. I look at zero percents empty glasses, look the guy straight in the eye, smile, and walk away. He stops me as I'm walking over with apps for my new table and asks for boxes. I tell him I'll grab them right after I drop off this food. I play a game of 2048 all the way up to 1024 before bringing them one small box. They ask for two bigger boxes in the check. I promise I'll be right back and then ask my boss to keep an eye on the table I like while I go breathe again. Obviously, I don't usually take this many breathe breaks, especially not this early into a shift. I come back and my boss tells me they came to her for boxes and to pay and told her they're never coming back. She voids their check, gives me the $20 some dollars, and tells me I earned it. TLDR. Boss gave me $20 to give over the top bad service to awful regulars. Story 44. Boy, this is my time to